Mm. Okay. So, uh, start talking about uh, your project, that is the uh, Isle of Karna, and um, um, how long time ago you start with this project? Okay, um, the, the project started in several phases, mm -hmm. and I think we've, I started it about 15 years ago, when I was just um, mowing the meadows, restoring the meadows for, for grass farm, for grazing. Um, and then we got involved with a possibility of looking for wildcats. <clears throat> and that, that led us to look clo more closely at the, at the island and get some, uh, some specialist people in to um, look at the background levels of animals and, and plants and you know, butterflies and the, 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 uh, things like the mice population and that sort of thing. And during that time, we spoke to people who said this is a very special this is a very special place and you've actually got some really good opportunities here to to improve it and to record it and to make a you know a, a project that's a containable size you know it's a, it's a nice size project you haven't got neighbors you haven't got any neighboring animals coming on it's a self-contained uh, project so i guess that we formed kind of conservation about five or six years ago as a proper entity and that's what we're doing. We'd actually changed the mindset from just, you know, getting the meadows a bit better to actually, you know, we're now that project. Um, and since then we've gained partners in the project, one of which being uh, the cow, the cows. Um, someone else we spoke to was looking for the similar, they were look, similar ideas to us. We were looking for cattle, but we couldn't afford them. They were looking for ground, and we, had, we both had a similar plan, an ethos with the animals. So we partnered up with Caroline and Alex um, from uh, World of Culture, and they brought the cattle on. Now that, <clears throat> that means that we now are addressing the soils, the, the soils issues, and the tree issues. Before that, we were really just looking at the meadows, and we put the bees on, the, black, the native black bees, and the, and the bees were um, an opportunity I wanted to be involved with, I and mean, we're short of bees and bees need con conservation. But we also realised that the island is, is, we can only just put them on. It's not really, it's only marginal that they can survive there. Um, so we want to make it such that they can survive there much, much more easily and restore projects. Okay. And... Um... So, which are the challenges now for uh, what concerns the environment of Karna? Which um, the improvement? I think if, now we've got a vision that we want to become a lot, a, a lot more woodland, improve the grasses so there's bigger diversity for grasses for grazing. Um, I think the project, there's lots of things holding us back. We've got no, we've got no funding. That, I mean, no major funding, which is a, an you know, important factor. And all the work we're doing is on a voluntary basis, which is, means that we can't do exactly everything we'd like to do. We would like to improve the fencing, but again, it takes time and money. We need to uh, do that slowly. We've got <coughs> infrastructure problems like boating and um, pontoons, both of which you know, could do with some more investment in. Um, we're also looking for um, better recording systems and better ways of monitoring it. Again, um, that all takes money and a lot, a lot of effort. You know, it needs, it needs someone like universities to say, yes, we'll send a team of people and they can look after or look at one particular piece. You know, maybe they want to monitor the grasses or maybe they want to monitor the trees. So, in order to get that to happen, we've got to be a bit more established in terms of well, more well known about what we're doing and then they will go actually yes this is a project that we could we could send students to so i think it's a problem it's a, it's a question of getting over the next hurdles mm -hmm. okay um what's special of uh, the isle of karna in the sense um, which are the most uh, beautiful um uh, the most beautiful uh, species are the most uh, uh, interesting elements that characterize the island? <clears throat> it's 
difficult to say because it depends what you're into. And from the marine side and the mainland, we've got we've got the otters. Um, that's, the, the island is particularly good for viewing otters. Um, but we've also got about a hundred varieties of moths and butterflies. And if you you know if you're interested in those, they they're, they're fascinating. We have red deer and roe deer. Um, we also have. Uh, the golden eagles and the sea eagles both feeding on the island. They're not nesting, but they're feeding on the island. Um, one of the uh, girls, uh, Heather Derve, found, I think it was a water shrew, you know, and that's not a very big, it's not a big thing. It's just a little thing, but it's, it's lovely to find and it would be lovely to study it. So there's not any one of those things is special in itself what it is you can go to one spot and within a few hundred meters you will see all those species the otters the eagles the seabirds um they're all in a close tight little thing you don't have to go far to find them okay so i think that's actually one of the things that makes kana unique is that it's got so many diverse things quite close together and uh, you think that your project can be uh, of inspiration for other projects and can be uh, like um, a model for uh, ecotourism in uh, Scotland? Uh, yes. Um, if you wind the clock back a little bit, Kana was a farm it, and there was a time when hill farming was profitable and people could sustain a living and that, that's no longer the case in, in the Highlands now. You, it's very difficult to farm uh, and make a living from farming unless you've got good ground or, 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 or a lot of it. And Karna hasn't, hasn't particularly got any of those. Um, so in order to uh, make the island work, we have to find things that can make it work financially. And so one of the things is we've made it really good for tourism. It's a lovely place to visit. It's got uh, nice cottages. Um, it's remote. It, it ticks all those boxes. And if we can make the wildlife or make the habitat good for wildlife, then, that, then, that, then that's good. If that's part of a learning project and that we can export the knowledge out, that's also good because it means students come and, and stay. And if they're staying, they're renting the cottages. So that's, that's all good too. So it is a question of... Um, thinking a bit in one big circle that we can do everything and each little bit adds to the whole. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about the uh, uh, introduction of uh, other species like uh, weasel or mink in the island? Um, well, if there are any mink, they would, the, the mink is a problem. Mm -hmm. the mink is a non-native species and, and if we had mink, and I have seen one mink I saw a mink about four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, 20-ish years ago, there were a lot of mink in the area and they were slowly eradicated. And I just saw one and it could just be an isolated thing. Presumably, presumably there's more. And if there was a big increase, then we would, we would have to, to read about. I don't think we can just reintroduce animals uh, at a drop of a hat. Um, They've been talking about maybe putting wildcats out back out, and the pre-studies that you have to do to in order to release another animal are huge. You can't just release animals, uh, otherwise you, you have all sorts of problems. So at the moment, before we reintroduce any other animals, apart from some of the t different types of grazers, because we've put the cows on, and uh, we might put some horses on, some native horses or, or ponies on, uh, and they, they would help graze in a different way to the cows, but that's us just establishing grazing and we would have to manage the way they feed. So we're managing what they do and how they do it. If you were to put uh, a large carnivore or carnivore like, a, you know, like wildcats on, you could devastate the population of, uh, you know, voles and mice and so on to the point that you then drive off your buzzards and birds of prey. So you, you can't do one or the other until you know it's safe to do so. And um, in which way you uh, can regulate the number of deer inside uh, the Karna Island? Um, we do regulate the deer. Um, going back 
20 plus years ago, I remember there being quite large herds of deer on Carnal. It was you could see them quite clearly. Um, now we've got the population down to between two and six, and this year I think we've got four on. Um, I think we'd like to keep this very, very low population or zero for a few years to let the trees come back up. When the trees are more established, I think we can be a bit more flexible on deer, but at the moment to allow um, regeneration of the forests because the deer target the trees uh, and, it, it, and we, we just can't generate enough seedlings to feed the deer so we have to keep them we have to keep them back we saw plantation on the Isle of Karna yeah um, which are the plants that instead you want uh, to regrow oaks uh, birches uh, um, the native species, the, the plantation is, is, was part of a commercial plantation that was put on, I, I think it was put on 40, 50 years ago, although the exact dates I don't know. Um, we would only now plant, if we were to plant, we would encourage regeneration rather than planting, uh, because that's part of the, if we, can re, if we can regenerate quick enough, it's cheaper than planting. And I think at the moment we wouldn't plant until we know we've got decent soils to plant it on. And we won't do that until uh, the cows have had a you know, good few years on the island. Um, so it's not just a question of sticking trees in the ground and hoping they'll grow. They're not going to grow successfully until the soils have regenerated. Uh, but what, what, what there is a loose plan to do is to encourage uh, thorny bushes like bramble and hawthorn and blackthorn and then which the cows won't penetrate and then inside that there'll be natural generation of the of broad, broadleaf woodland and they'll come up through uh, and that's so that's how we're going to increase the population of trees something else um Moving the focus of Cedea, Isle of Karna, uh, you know what is uh, rewilding and uh, if you know it, uh, what you think about it? And um, it's a movement that uh, is uh, taking um, um, a lot of uh, voice in Scotland and is asking for the reintroduction of um, predators like uh, lynx or uh, maybe in future also wolves. What do you think about it? Um. I think it would be difficult on Karna for the site because the island of the site yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's a bit it's a bit small. But you could consider our neighbours as in Morven, mm -hmm. which is it's a big enough place. Um, again, and I think it goes back to what I said earlier. You can't just reintroduce predators uh, unless everything is in proper balance. Um, and I think uh, you need a lot. We need a lot more study doing on that. But that said. It would be lovely to see lynxes at least back. I think that would be a good thing. Um, again, if, and if we could sustain lynx, it would mean that the whole hillside would be in better condition. Wolves would be lovely. I think it's great that they have them. I'm not sure that politically or what we would like to think there were wolves out there. People are just too frightened of them. I think from a conservation point of view, they'd be brilliant. But I think from a, a tourist aspect, I'm not sure we're quite ready for those because we're not set up for them. Um, and I know in bigger countries, they've done it and done it very well, but they're, but they're bigger than us. They're bigger, they're bigger than our small populations. Um, so it would be great, but I'm, I'm not sure we're ready for it. And I haven't seen any, anyone making any big moves, but I know there's a links, a move for links. And I think that's a good thing. Um, but, but before we put them in, we have to have a big, big, big study of everything first. Because um, we've, had, we've had problems where uh, wild cats or lynx or, and also uh, big birds like the sea eagles, have come, they do come into direct conflict with farming. And then there's a, a farming issue. Um, and then that's not been sorted out before it happens. And then it happens and then you've got a big problem to sort out. Uh, and every, you know, meanwhile, sheep and stock are being lost, uh, and there's no uh, sort of compensation deal on the table, and it wasn't agreed before they let the birds go, uh, and it's a bit of an afterthought. 
So I think, yeah, before we introduce anything, all those things have got to be sorted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what do you think about uh, the perspective also of the upland? Because we are surrounded by hills and uh, mountains that are uh, almost completely bare. Yeah. And um, do you think that uh, this is a problem? Because a lot of people think that uh, this, this kind of landscape is so typical uh, of Scotland and uh, it's so good to preserve it. On the other hand, uh, the conservation of this kind of habitat is also considered um, by a lot of ecologists a kind of conservation of uh, an almost desert area because um, we um, used to have uh, at this altitude at least uh, and with this kind of uh, temperatures we tend to have uh, a kind of uh, temperature and forest in other places. Instead, we have uh, so few trees in uh, this part of... Uh, um, um, there is... A, a Scotland's been this way for such a long time, people actually think this is how it should look, you know, devoid of trees on the tops. Um, it's completely and utterly man-made vista. Um, I think if we are going to come back into, I think we are, in reality we have to come back to complete tree cover, not necessarily every single place, um, we could have a mixture, and I think that's a good balance, a good, a good sort of um, thing, but it, it's, the problem is people actually think this is a natural environment when it actually isn't, and I think that you have to change away from, once you change people's minds, then I think the, the, uh, it would be easier to actually allow natural vistas to come back. But at the moment, people actually think this is how it's supposed to be, which is the mistake. Uh, can Karna uh, become in the future uh, one example of uh, a different kind of a Scottish landscape? I think it could, I think it, yes, I think it can. And I think it, it could become an example too of a different kind of farm. Um, whereby we have mixed diverse things, we are looking at a multiple products, we're looking at uh, tourism, gentle forestry, gentle farming, um, every little bit is just adding a little bit to the economy of, of Kana and employing just a little bit of a few people and we're not trying to do one thing like a sheep farm or a cattle farm, we'll just have a few of each type uh, including forestry and I think Yes, I think it could. I think it could set, set the way forward for traditional crafts and traditional um, ways of doing things. And it, it would also have a modern taste because in the past it didn't have tourism, but now it would have tourism. And I think we, you know, you can, if you've got a good um, ecology around you, you can show tourists who pay a lot of money to take photographs of, of wildlife and beautiful plants and beautiful bits and pieces. So I think, yeah, I think you can.